I'm on the Flying J in Fort Erie US border is five clicks away three miles and the truck stop is is full I usually I never park like this and first I parked over here and then people started having issues getting out because everybody goes like this because that's the exit and so I figured out so I moved here and see this is kind of like a dead end so you're not in the way and right away some guy parked behind me so <laughs> this is a perfect spot will be easy to leave in the morning and the price of diesel it's far for the GoPro to check but gas is 175.9 so dollar 76 per liter and diesel is 215.9 so pretty much 216 per liter Canadian this is probably the highest ever I saw in Canada but flying J pilot you know they're all crazy super greedy so anyway let me sh let me show you the the load so i i got up at like five o'clock in the morning and it was all confusing because we moved our clocks by one hour forward i hate when we do this so i think they're saying that we're gonna stop that soon and uh, i stopped by the starbucks got coffee i was still at the hotel and i drove in my car to the truck and waited in the car till the truck was warmed up because it was still pretty cold it was like minus six and uh and then i drove two hours north from my yard probably actually it's like two and a half hours it was under 100 miles probably 90 miles but it, uh, secondary roads took a long time and then my uh, my kingpin was over there right so i had to drop the trailer took like 15-20 minutes to rehook the kingpin in here so that I can transfer more weight this way and the yard the yard where I was loading it was all dirt wet wet dirt so I just cleaned up my 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 floor it's back and all my boots are dirty again see that's how it, all this stuff was I'm not even worrying about this anyway so this machine it's a mining specialized mining uh, uh, you can call it uh, uh, aerial platform right because this side goes up and down I think yeah and that's the the cab over there and I asked him what happened with the previous guy because I'm replacing a carrier who, who went there and they were not able to load it and but they gave me their bond free because it goes to the port right so they sold it to some spanish speaking now look at this guy look at the angle between the trailer and the truck and his wheels are dragging and he's fully loaded anyway that's not how to back basically But yeah, the truck stop is crazy full because, and that's why I stopped here. I wanted to go to Jim's uh, truck plaza in Buffalo, and because the diesel is way is should be way cheaper over there. And there's uh, Panera Bread over there. There's a restaurant and the truck stop. So I wanted to go there, but turns out CBP Customs Border Protection here in Buffalo, and it's the same port for Niagara Falls, you know, Queenston, Lewiston. They did an update update of their computer system over the weekend and now they're having issues uh, basically with e-manifests and entry numbers and so I did I did everything I double checked triple checked I called uh, I called the uh, border connect people three times they say nothing is wrong on my end it's CBP and that's why the truck stop is so full because everybody else is waiting for for clearance like they have, they're having an issue, you know, matching entry numbers with e-manifests. And so I, I keep checking. I cannot go until I see all green, uh, green bars in there, right? On the website. If it's not green, I cannot go. Now, I wonder what the, what the plan of this guy is.
So everybody's waiting for clearance. We cannot, uh, because you know, we cannot cross into US. So anyway, so I ask him, what was the problem with the previous truck? And the guy says, well, we tried loading and then we had to correct it because it's one of those crazy articulated machines. It doesn't, you know, the steering wheels don't turn. You know, once it's crooked, it's very hard to fix that on the trailer. So you have to drive off, right? Look how much dirt is on my main beams. Of I cleaned up a little bit, now it's back over there. I probably have like 200 pounds of sand inside the trailer. And so when they tried to back it off the trailer, they said what happened is that the machine started breaking the floor of that guy's trailer. And I said, wait, it's only 50,000 pounds. Like what's, what's the problem? I said, what kind of trailer did he have? And they said, uh, float. So float, RGM. And I said, I need to see the machine because I got some boards, you know, like, and they show me this and look at this. It's all solid rubber, I think. And you know, solid rubber, the very, uh, the very, uh, so it's 12 dash 20. So it's 12 inches wide and the, the rim is 20 inches. But the problem is, is that it's only 12 inches and it's only one tire, right? And so I told the guy, I said, hold on let me let me put the boards under this because and of course these are all broken these are cheap boards but it doesn't matter they still work because they reinforce you know your floor and so and we had to put like this front here is very low see like the clearance we barely made it but for this to go over like this uh, of course these wheels had to be on the board and this is three inches whereas this one is only one and a half i think uh, less than two because this is real hardwood this is just home depot softwood but actually we had to put those four by fours and more boards like over here you know when the trailer was down we had to put it across like this otherwise the front of the machine was hitting this area and it didn't hit, I saw it was coming like too close. I said, stop, sir, please. Let's put some boards in here. And I put the boards and he just, the guy, the, you know, the manufacturer, uh, the operator was from the manufacturer facility. Cause he knows these machines, you know, by heart. And he gave me a couple of tips. He says, this side, this axle only has 17,500 pounds. This axle has 30, 32,000. Basically the entire machine is like 49.5. And this, this side is almost two times heavier than this side. And at first I said, how can it be? Like over here we have the engine, right? We have uh, what? We have some cables, we have some boards. And he says, no, like he says, the center of gravity is somewhere here. And that's why I try to bring it, you know, as close as possible to the rear because I don't want the truck to be overloaded. Even though it's, you know, 50,000 pounds. But he says, all oh, this is metal, massive. And then they have these support legs, right? It's all very thick steel. And he says, that's the part that goes up and down. And then, uh, when we load it, I ask him if he has that, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like the thing that blocks from articulation? And he said, yeah, so we blocked it. But I see how, how narrow the wheels are, the tires. So that's the danger of this thing. And so, oh, that reminds me. I forgot, of course, I knew I would forget it. I forgot the oversize sign on my booster. Remember, I disconnected the booster and I just got a brand new sign, left it on the back. But in Canada, D works, but before I get to US, I have to, I'm gonna go inside Flying J and buy that sign. But, but also, one more thing. You know how I always say that never trust shippers with weight and dimensions? Like, look at this. Like, this is the rear of the trailer. 
because it's hard to see with GoPro but <laughs> trust me when I say that nothing sticks out past the edge of the trailer same on this side <laughs> nothing sticks out you know I climb in the top uh, and it's one of the reasons why we wanted to drive it on is because this side is much lower because I knew I wanted to put it on boards right to go over that and I didn't want it to be over height but because they said 11 7 11 feet 7 inches so I climb on the top and I'm like 12 2 so I'm legal height legal width the only problem is that and I have three axles so I'm not over I'm not too long so the only problem is that I'm heavy so 50 for the machine and uh, my empty weight is now 57 because each of the flip axles is 3,000 pounds so usually my weight with four with eight axles four axle track for axle trailer is is 60,000 pounds minus three for one flip axle that I left at home 57 right so 57 and 50 107 and of course 107 that's more than 80 right so anyway yeah, you see that's what happens this was with that uh, previous shuttle wagon almost broke this board like it would be so nice you know if this was a bit wider and it was sitting on this then there would be no problem but see it, it's not even touching the the metal anyway i asked the guy to give me a quick lesson on how to operate this monster and he says get in i said okay i said can you please reinstall the steering wheel i said i think you removed the steering wheel he says no there's no steering wheel <laughs> So that's the steering man so basically you turn this key right then you wait till it goes through some series of lights it beeps and then you push this button and the thing is because this goes for export to I don't know I forgot where but I think Dominican Republic all signs are in Spanish and there's nothing in English like there's no duplicate right so the only thing I can read transmission transmission and motor something right and of course I know that this is parking so anyways the guy says turn this wait till it starts beeping then push this button that's your starter arrange motor <laughs> basically that's how you start and then he says put your hand put your foot on the brake like this and this thing the parking brake has two positions he says you just pull it to the first position and then you turn your head and you watch these two gauges like look these are very nice gauges but they're not very accurate because check this out it's 1500 psi 1500, 1500. oh these are a thousand psi so they're very each line represent represents a lot of psi but basically the guy says once you pull it to the first position watch these because they should go to that green area to the top in the middle once they're in the middle then you can pull out completely that means you have no parking brakes anymore and this is the this is your transmission <laughs> so neutral reverse forward so the front is there right so this way it'll go forward this way it'll basically you release the brake no you hold it like this let's say you want to go backwards like i'm unloading right so i just flip it this way release the brake and just you know play with the throttle if you need to stop click this and that's your speed but it says don't touch that you know like this thing doesn't it cannot go very very uh fast so he says just don't touch that gear one so it has three gears um and that's it and then yeah so this if you push it this way it starts going this way because it's uh, articulated right if you pull if you pull it this way this front will start going this way so it's very crazy counterintuitive thing and you're sitting sideways as you can see you know like you cannot see anything in the front 
So I had to climb on the top of the trailer and show him, you know, come, 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 left, right, you know. But my secret plan is for unloading, I told the guys that I'm not gonna even touch this because he loaded perfectly straight. Well, not perfectly, but it's acceptable. So it should roll by itself. And look how much stuff is everywhere. It's unbelievable you know that's why this thing is super expensive i look at the i look at the invoice i couldn't believe how much it costs like for the amount of money somebody is paying for this you can buy like three brand new excavators i'm serious this is super expensive because there's like look at all this hoses hydraulics all these chains um super fancy lights you see everything is protected by this right everything is for the mine a very interesting unusual machine but now i take back what i said ugly i don't think it's ugly it's that that picture did not do it justice you know and then uh at least this one the good news is that this one has lots of tie down uh, eyes everywhere see i put uh, pulling this way because the front is pulling this way so this kind of pulls against the chain in the front and then this pulls this way right and this is just for the boards this pulls this way you see so you have to have two chains counter counter balancing each other and then I climb in there took me like probably half an hour because there's very limited space in there I put two more chains in there because it's it's pretty heavy so you know when i hit my brakes this holds it from rolling that way and that's the last chain over here last last chain i have one chain that doesn't have a hook on the other end and which is sometimes useful you know you just because the it's too big for the hook but if you don't if one end is open you just you know put it in so that's my load that's my load sitting on boards all legal oh and I got my permits I got um, New York Pennsylvania New Jersey but what I don't have is I don't have New York City I don't have the permit you know once I cross because it's funny, I, I, it, I never did it like this before. Like, I need one permit for New York, once I in Buffalo, right? I need the permit. But then I go into Pennsylvania, then I go into New Jersey, I have that one as well. But then from New Jersey, I'm going back into New York City, which is New York. And I asked my permit broker, I said, why does my New York permit stops at the Pennsylvania border? I said, uh, what's gonna happen, like, which permit will cover me when I leave New Jersey and she said well it's the New York City permit and then she emailed me so that's the only one that's the only one that's uh, still in the wind and uh, oh and the good thing the funny thing is they they want me to drive at night and you know as soon as i saw this machine when it was on my trailer i i, ch I saw that it was legal pretty much like the width and the height right it's just the weight just twenty thousand pounds over over legal limit I should probably just take off signs you know like that's why i didn't put any flags on because nothing sticks out but some states still wanted to they still wanted to have the oversized sign in the front and rear when you're heavy because you're traveling under a permit but sometimes i don't even bother with that one never had any issues because you know they can see they can see that it's legal right if they ask me for the permit i'll show them the permit And uh, and so I called I called the permit broker. I said, "Would it help 
with the New York City permit if I tell you that I'm actually legal in width and height and she says no they still wanted to drive at night through New York City I said uh, so it's not because of of the width or height she says no it's because of the weight so they don't want overweight trucks on that bridge whatever bridges I, I I don't know how they're sending me but I think it's uh, what is it uh, 276 476 you know the one that goes at the bottom there from New Jersey and then enters Brooklyn and she says uh, overweight trucks have to travel at um, at night and I said okay hold on and I'm thinking how am I gonna uh, keep my e-log legal you know if I, if I drive at night that's it then I cannot drive on the next day because I need to show um, 10 hours in the sleeper and uh, she said uh, night hours at 10 p.m. to 5 30 a.m. I said cool so basically I can get up at 3 o'clock you know make sure I, I shut down 10 hours before so that will be like a short day right and I shut down or let's say I, I get up at 4 or something but of course where do you stop in New Jersey that's always a problem and usually I stop somewhere like two hours away near Scranton you know because there's nowhere to stop right next to uh, to New York City like there's one TA right there's a TA at that Delaware Gap but it's I don't like that truck stop it's very small well of course now I don't have a Jeep I don't have a booster so I don't know but anyway as long as I get out as long as I get to the consignee by 5 30 I'm good so it, it's not exactly like 1 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. you know because that's when they say night driving that's what I'm thinking it's kind of like I did it once in Nova Scotia when I was moving that big track with the Jeep and booster and they wanted me to do the same um, night driving only and that one also was it was like six inches wide eight inches tall right but it was heavy and I was alone and we had to use a police escort and two civilian escorts and so they said yeah night driving only and the guy says uh, I'll meet you at 3 a.m. at the port and of course I don't like that but you know four o'clock or five o'clock no five will not work because that only gives me 30 minutes uh, four if I leave if I if I sleep in Scranton somewhere and I leave at four I'm not gonna make it to uh, New York City uh, till six somehow again so I'll have to get up at like three in the morning and then you have to get out because they were asking me like after delivery when are you gonna leave New York City like they're very concerned you know about these oversized overweight loads and I said right away uh, but I'm telling you I was driving with this thing uh, back here right I took 407 it was but you know once I got to highway 10 uh, in Brampton and then then it's 410 407 but before that it was very slow lots of stop signs lights small towns it took me probably like four hours I don't know uh, yeah I left I think at one o'clock but then I stopped because I wanted to take care of my um, ace e-manifest I thought by the time I come to the border it should be ready and no it's not ready they're having an issue right so like I said uh, some kind of problem with the updated system and that's why there's so many trucks here well some guy just came in and almost looks like my trailer he has a single axle booster on the deck and a tandem Jeep uh, all loaded on the deck oh and I saw a couple of cool trucks in here 
there was a beam beam trailer he had some humongous excavator you know beam right so it, the, the tracks are like this tall above the ground and this guy because this is Ontario this guy had a ten, uh, regular truck with a tandem tandem drives and then he had a tandem Jeep and quad trailer four axle trailer so he had three and two five nine so he had nine axles but no booster because this way uh, you're shorter right you're much shorter uh, like in my case you're 14 feet shorter which saves a bunch of money on pilots in New York and you can get a lot of weight uh, on a quad in, in, in this area you know Ontario New York PA New Jersey Maryland you can get you don't need a booster and so it, it was interesting to see it and I, I don't think I ever saw no I did it once myself with a with a crane when my booster broke I had a tandem Jeep and and the quad but the thing is like in my case the Jeep is so long right so the truck is way up ahead so my my thinking is that when I do it like that tandem Jeep and quad trailer I overload the trailer and this guy that he parked over there it looked pretty heavy you know and then there was another guy also with a with a with a beam I think yeah with the beam so he had some big dozer but no tracks some humongous doors are very tall and he had the same thing he had a quad trailer and then he had a regular truck with tandem drives and he had a single axle Jeep so eight axles so you know some interesting uh, configurations you see that because that's how people try to save save um, you know money on pilots and permits right because you don't want to be longer than necessary so anyway I, I'm gonna drop my trailer now there's a Walmart but five minutes away because I just stopped I went to uh, Flying J there they only have pizza and everything is breaded actually I had a slice of pizza because I didn't eat anything since morning so, but now I think I'm gonna take the take uh, I'm gonna take the neck with me because it's so short very easy and just drive on some backward roads over here to Walmart and get some food and then on the way back I think I'll stop and uh, I haven't decided yet if I want to use the sign or not you know I might just take the front one off <sighs> I figured uh oh I figured I might show you some some driving I want to see if I can show you the truck that I was talking about with the beam but I know it's it's pointed this way all right first first we gotta check if if my truck is lined up properly because if it's not lined up properly then those support legs Yeah, sometimes it happens that PTO gets out.
PTO didn't take, so I had to hit the clutch. So now I'm gonna drive forward. Now I raise the suspension. Let's see how high the, the neck is. I think it's okay. It's not gonna it's not gonna touch. Two dollars sixteen cents, man. Greedy, greedy pilot. Okay, I got my uh, mask. I got my money. Bye-bye mining machine. out over here so that's that guy oh he has a leap her leap her on a beam with a quad and he parked like this <laughs> that guy has some huge rocks I don't like that you know once I, I, I think a couple of times I moved uh, these big rocks you know they use them in these uh, garden shops or something and of course you have to use chains and it's not I don't think it's it's not safe you know but you cannot load them on a inside a driver so they put them on a flatbed or step deck but then you know you see across the road over here at Esso 202.9 diesel 202.9 so 13 cents cheaper than on the pilot so if you drop your trailer you can save 13 cents per liter or almost 50 cents Canadian per gallon But I think it's still gonna be cheaper in New York. I have quarter of a tank over here and I got just sl slightly less than half in here. So, and the border is five clicks away, three miles. And then, uh, the Jim's Plaza is, I don't know, 15 miles from the border. So I definitely have enough fuel but I'm telling you it's so such a, a relief to drive a short trailer with three axles I, I caught myself going too wide over corners you know like I look in the mirror and I'm going like this because I'm used to you know booster and quad and and this three axle especially with a short neck like I don't have any flip box right like normally I would put in that 36 inch uh, flip box, but I did, this time I didn't want to pay to the record company 500 bucks 
I think these choppers are made here actually. Air bus. Air. Air bus. Yeah, that noise in the sleep, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's like a vibrating metal sound. That's my folder. You know that fancy aluminum folder? That's one of the drawbacks of that one is that you, you put it on the, on the bed and this thing just shakes like crazy. Here we have to be very careful because this is on the left is a Niagara Regional Police Service uh, basically police station. And on this side they used to have a racetrack for horses. And these small, these uh, short buildings is where the, the horses were kept. And now it's all in ruins. And they closed that thing. I think they, there was a story about this saying that they, in Ontario, they closed all race tracks. Because they were getting assistance from the government and they still could make money, you know. That's why they, there's a saying on Wall Street, right? Never invest into something that eats or needs repairs. Uh, and two examples are trucks and horses. <laughs> Now this way I can get back to the truck stop this way to take QW. But there's a scale there, that new scale. And sometimes that guy sits there at night, you know, just trying to find fault with hardworking truckers like Mr. Dretchev. <laughs> 